Well, hey there, Sharon Hornelstrom here. I am, oh wow, today is day 825. 825 days in a row of what she up to now. Documenting the journey of transitioning from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business. This is kind of my little daily journal where I just talk about what I'm doing, what I'm working on, what's working, what's not. Now this is day three of a very cool event that I'm participating in called the A360i. I stands for interactive and it is, I believe, the event and the technology that will replace on offline events for right now since we're in a crisis and a pandemic in at least in America and the whole world really is, is going through massive changes right now and stage selling and stages and events and big events have been shut down and closed. And so Pete Vargas III is a gentleman that I've been involved with for several years and followed. And he did a Rise Up Challenge a, geez, a week ago. It finished, it ended, it was a three week challenge and led that into this event. This is normally their, their annual event and it would be an in-person 1100 person event and instead it's been taken online and made interactive. So a lot of us have done Zoom calls. I've done Zoom calls with people and with small groups for a couple of years now, but it, and, and that's interactive when you're in a small group. There's over 2,200, 2,300 people in this event right now. And he's in, I believe, Charlotte, probably North Carolina, South Carolina, one of the Carolinas, but he's in Charlotte. And he's on a stage with these giant screens that have everybody's picture and everybody zoom up on him and he can see what we're doing in our homes we're all in our own homes and things but he's made it interactive we've had small breakout groups which are awesome I've done breakout groups before but they've taken this to a whole new level so I'm learning all about that and in addition to that I'm learning about how you create your signature speech how you speak how you present your message what do you do with your hands and your eyes because I look like I have crazy eyes all the time so I'm learning a lot in that and I'll share that moving forward as I present and share in different mediums and with my my group and my groups because I haven't gotten down to one group yet as you are you probably well aware and I still uh, am split and not focused one of the biggest messages from the training that I've gleaned so far is the importance of clarity and focus and one thing now I coach all my coaching students on this yet here I am still not doing it so that's part of why uh, I have been distancing myself from Pajama Grandma. I used to always introduce myself, hey, Sharon Horn Elstrom here, also known as Pajama Grandma. For like two years I've done that. And over the last 30, 40 days, I've stopped doing that because somehow I want to start branding myself as me, who I really am. And for a while it was Pajama Grandma. That was my persona. That was what was working for me as I was going through this big transition phase. But now, as much to my family's delight, I am shedding that persona and, and being more of and presenting a different, ver not a different version, but a different, more authentic, real version of myself. Now, was I hanging out in my pajamas for about two years as I was creating my online businesses? Yes, yes I was. And that's why Pajama Grandma was born and why it fit for me at the time. But I've noticed as, really as COVID hit, it didn't feel right and it didn't make sense for me anymore. Now, some people could have probably, and I probably could have capitalized that and, that and said, hey, there's a lot of us that are home and now that we've gotten a taste of being home, we wanna stay home in our pajamas, but it still, it didn't feel like the right move for me. So, transitioning out of that. But I'm really loving this training. The reason, part of the reason I signed up for and paid for and I'm doing this, this event, this online interactive event, is I wanted to learn about the process. A lot of what I do and a lot of what I follow up on and learn and take for courses and, and coaching nowadays is because it's something that I want to learn faster and apply to my life and my business so that I can do what it is that I want to do in the world and I want to impact the people that I'm here to impact and have an influence on. So I will take courses and, and follow coaches and, and be involved with coaches and people and mentors and masterminds and groups and everything else and invest in myself and my own skills and abilities so that I can go ahead, learn a new thing and then turn around and teach it to the people that I'm here to serve. I do a lot of learning and I'm doing more and more teaching nowadays. So today's the third day of that and I will tell you, I think it's as exhausting you don't have to travel, you don't have to stay in hotels, you don't have to eat in restaurants and eat all kinds of food that messes up your system. But I think it's just as energy, 
I guess you utilizing our energy. I get as tired in this online event as I have in going to physical events. So it's it's got some major advantages. You don't have to travel. You don't have to stay in hotels. You don't have to be away from home and away from your family, uh, which I would have loved 20 years ago, you know, and even 10 years ago, I would have loved that. Um, so I'm, I'm very grateful and appreciative of the technology and the changes that are coming down the pipe. And again, for like two years, I've been doing this going offline to online. So it's kind of right up my flow and alley. And that's why I want to make sure I can help a lot of other people and a lot of other business owners to be utilizing these things and these, these skills. So probably look for some workshops in the very near future from me and I've got a team, I'm putting together a team of really amazing people that will help me do those workshops and help us deliver to you exactly what you need to create the life that you want, the, the business and the job and the side gig or whatever it is that you want to create for yourself. So working on that. 30 books in 30 day challenge. Oh my God, my friend Abel. <laughs> this has been such a stretch for me, especially since I was doing my own challenge. I was participating in two others. I was also um, knew this training was coming up. The hardest time, the hardest days I've had with my books for this challenge has actually been, uh, and I got them done, but it was by this the hair, <laughs> my skinny skin, by the by the hair on my chinny chin chin, something like that. Uh, it was a narrow margin that I got them done with. I was up late last night finishing my book because, um, as you know, I'm sure I've mentioned, I am legally blind, so reading is a challenge for me. And it's, it's actually, if, if I get nothing else out of this challenge, then um, actually making myself go out and get the technology that I need in my household in order to deal with the, the blindness thing in, order, in a more efficient way. You know, I can put a lot of stuff up on my big screen TV, but I realize there's some tools that I, I need to start using that I haven't been using. Why? Ego, stubbornness. Um, not wanting to admit that I need help with anything, including my vision. Now, there's a lot of areas I've already had to get help with. I haven't driven for a couple of years, so I've had to get driven around for a lot uh, for the last couple of years. Now, with COVID-19, it's actually been kind of nice for me because more people have been stuck and not been able to go around and do things. And so I feel like I'm not so alone in that anymore. I, I've never felt lonely about it, but sometimes it was irritating not being able to drive. And I think I got a, a taste of that back when I had my sudden cardiac arrest. I remember I was freaking out because I couldn't drive for six months. And that was the thing that made me the most angry about the whole situation was that I couldn't drive for six months and I, I couldn't be in control of my own life. But I think just like my previous challenges in my life have prepared me for this COVID-19 crisis, I believe that that prepared me to be more accepting when I found out I, I wasn't gonna be able to drive anymore. And you just, you know what, you just figure it out. We always just, make things work because there's always a solution um, so Evel's challenge is a challenge today i will be very delighted by tomorrow i think we're gonna have a conference call tomorrow she and i a zoom call i will be super excited tomorrow when it rolls around and i don't have an all-day training and i'm trying to do my book now the cool thing about today is i don't have my granddaughter today but secretly my son um took care of my granddaughter, not secretly, the last couple of days to really pick up the slack and only got to spend a couple hours with her. So I'll be excited to see her on Monday because I've been kind of missing her. Just even a couple of days and I don't get to uh, interact with her a lot. It's, it's amazing how much energy and how, how delightful and exciting and, and fun it is to hang out with a little young person. Maybe it's because I'm old and my kids are grown, but I have had so much fun spending time with my my four-year-old granddaughter before covid i was spending you know a, most of the day with her monday through friday but she would go to day school for three hours three and a half hours and then all of a sudden none so we're still learning things we're adding structure and we're doing things she she's we do numbers we count to 100 first thing every morning no matter what we hop on youtube and we listen to and she counts to 100 because by the time she goes to school they're supposed to be able to count to 20 but i want to make sure she can count to 100 because that's a skill she can keep with her her entire life so we're doing things like that to add some structure to the day she's like why do we have to do this every morning and i'm like because you're going to need this for kindergarten and by the time you, you know we're we're done having to just well do i have to do it every day like what if i'm going for a hike i'm like we can probably fit it in before we go for a hike or before we go to the park we fit it in every day so far but once you can do it without having the video and out looking at it then we don't have to watch it every day anymore because you'll already know it and you'll have it for the rest of your life 
So we're doing some things like that. And it's fun because it, it keeps us young. I mean, they're so, she's so curious and so, her imagination is so amazing. It reminds me that creativity and imagination is something that we always want to cultivate, especially in times of stress and change and drama and trauma. We want to make sure that we're using our childlike imagination and our creativity to look for and be able to see the solutions that are around us all the time. But if we're stressed out, it's really hard to see them. Uh, day 116 for the fun challenge, doing a 365 day, do one fun thing every day challenge. Today was day 116. And I think that's a great challenge for the times we're in right now. If we can all just find one thing fun or to smile about every day, even if it's just one little thing, guess what? It'll build on itself and we'll all start to feel better. So those are the things I'm working on. I'm going to go process these videos and hop on ah, the amazing training. They're doing an hour long Q and a first thing this morning. So I want to make sure I get involved in that because I will admit that probably one of the best, most valuable pieces of um, this training that happened last night was a speak off. And I'm not sure how many people were there, but I bet maybe only half of the people that were attending the conference, and maybe some of them were on Facebook, but a lot of people didn't attend that. It's like when you go to an event and they have a video or a, an evening program or a networking event, and you choose not to go to that, you miss out on so much. The feedback and the people that were on the panel of judges for this 11-person uh, speak-off and listening to the 11 people's speeches was so powerful, and there were so many lessons learned. I don't even remember how many pages of notes I took during that, but at least 15 or 20 just during that portion of the, the extra training and events. So really, really powerful to remember to um, participate, participate in your life. What you get out of things is what you put into them. If you have to give, give your time and attention in order to learn and grow and share things that you learn with other people, and that, that can be your way of impacting the world. So that's it. If I can help you in any way, please hit me up and ask. That's what I'm here for. And look for some very cool and exciting things coming from me in the very near future because I'm excited about doing a virtual event. I've wanted to do an event for a while, but given my limitations with the eyes and stuff, it was becoming less and less practical without building a huge team. And I need a team anyway, right? Let's be honest. We all need a team. We all need people that help and support us. So it's another good thing about COVID-19. It's making me do things that to scale and build that I've been putting off doing for no reason, no reason at all, except for fear, right? We all have fear. Uh, and it's time to just say, blow that stuff out of the water, learn, share, grow, make the world a better place. That's it. Have an awesome day and I will be with you tomorrow. Bye.